Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Debut. Thank you so much for being here. Um, today is the 24th of October, as you can see on your screen. Um, I'm recording this Greek time, 10 past 6 in the afternoon. Okay, it's uh, we're seven days away from that full moon in Taurus that uh, will be happening. It's on Halloween. So as I said, I will be doing a video on that um, in the next coming days. It is the second consecutive full moon in the month of October, so it is a very special one. Um, okay, I'd like to wish all you Scorpio people happy birthday, if it is your birthday. Round about now, as the sun has ingressed into the sign of Scorpio. Okay, we've got Mercury retrograding in the sign of Scorpio okay it's moving backwards toward and it will be entering the sign of Libra in a few days as Mercury moves fairly quickly so in about four days actually it's going to be happening exactly um, if today's the 24th around the 28th it will be um, ingressing back into Libra and it will stay there for a little bit. On the same day, Venus will be entering its home sign um, of Libra. I will actually move the chart to show you that, but I just want to explain the main uh, energies, what we're working with right now. Um, of course, as you can see here, Venus is still in Virgo, and Venus does not like to be in Virgo. She's not strong there. Um, Venus is anything that we love, right? It's what we value. It's our projects. So some of you may be working very hard. You may have been working very hard on a particular area of life, project, something that will bring you more money. Remember that Virgo is the natural house of work. It's all about fine-tuning your craft. Um, looking for those missing details as the ruling planet of Virgo is in Scorpio. Okay, Mercury, the messenger of the gods, has gone deep into the dungeon with Scorpio there. So all the details, all the depth of Scorpio, and remember that Scorpio is all about death transformation. So changes on a very fundamental, very powerful level as Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, okay? So you may have been working on something, looking at the details. Now we've got Venus trining, beautiful trine over to Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma timing. Um, it's all about growth as it's very strong. It's moving direct in the sign of Capricorn. Remember that Saturn in Capricorn because the 10th house is all about, it's our status, it's our work, it's what we aim for. Okay, as the, the midheaven here, okay, the cusp of the 10th house is our goals and our aspirations. So we've been working really hard. 2020 has been a major, major challenge. Now, as you can see, obviously Venus um, in this position, she's already trined over to Jupiter recently. Then she trined over to Pluto. And remember that, you know, whoever she connects with, she also takes on that energy. So since uh, Venus trined over to Jupiter, some sort of a blessing came through. Um, for me personally, it wasn't something amazing um, because both Jupiter and uh, Venus both of these planets are not happy in their positions. They're, they've got a, a weakness, let's say, in the positions that they're at. But nevertheless, I mean, on a personal scale, it would have to tie in. These are the collective energies that we're reading, right? So as I always say, the sky is a reflection of our lives here. So the collective is going through these energies, Everyone is being affected by this um, level, at this level. But on a personal scale, 
more than likely you would have to have, let's say, a connection to Venus and Jupiter. So that would mean either that Jupiter or Venus would be on a, a very important point in your chart or on a personal um, planet of yours, okay, so that you could receive more on a personal scale. This is the collective, which does affect us, but I would say more than likely on a personal scale, um, that would have to be happening in your own personal chart. Um, so on a collective scale, this is beautiful energies as Venus connecting in a beautiful way to Saturn. Saturn is something practical. Both Venus in Virgo and Saturn in Capricorn, they're all about practicality, something that turns real. It's not our imagination. It's something physical and tangible that we've been working on. Okay, so this may have been an indication an indication of something that we've been hoping to manifest could come through on a 3D level, right? It could come true in reality. Um, but Venus is coming home to Libra and that's where she is extra strong. Now the downfall this year is that Venus in Libra will be connecting in a square to these power players here in Capricorn. So remember that Venus in Libra, Libra is cardinal, and cardinal signs are all connected uh, through a square. It's 90 degrees. It's a 90 degrees angle, which makes it difficult, but it's all about doing the work. It's all about getting uncomfortable so that we could put in the effort to make ourselves comfortable, to bring in what is our calling, what we need to, what, what we want to work towards. Remember, cardinal is I take action. It's, it's action-based. It's instigation, starting things. So, as I said, Venus has passed uh, some sort of a test, but she will be passing a major test as she is very strong, remember, in a home sign of Libra. And Libra is partnerships, relationships. So this will be, you know, the square is like turning a corner. Will we be doing the work? Okay, because partnerships of all sorts, family, work, friendships, anything in, in relation to partnerships will be important and will be changing. Okay, we have... The North Node now at 21 degrees. It's soon coming into 20 degrees, which will be the second part, the middle part of the Gemini um, season. Okay, or the, I should say the people that are born in the middle of the Gemini season, they will be affected more. And remember that uh, Gemini, North Node, Sagittarius, South Node, Okay, it's mutable energy. So the mutable signs of the last deacon, the last 10 days of the mutable signs, mutable signs are Sag, Gemini, Pisces, and Virgo. The last 10 degrees, so if you're born then, at the last 10 degrees, your life has been going through major fated changes. Now, almost, the nodes will be moving into the second deacon, therefore, those of you that are born under those signs in the middle of the season, okay, you're a Virgo, let's say, or you're a Sag, when you're in the middle of that time, that zodiac sign, that's when your turn comes for those changes. They will be affecting your life. Okay, Mars has reached now because it's retrograde. It it has reached um, the 17th degree. It will move still backwards until the 15th degree. It is traveling with Black Moon Lilith, not easy energy at all. Again, Aries is cardinal. It wants to move direct forward, instigate change, beginnings. It's not a time for that. Okay, so this is like, as I say, pressing on the accelerator and not getting anywhere. We're pressing to move forward, but we're moving backwards. Also, with Mercury retrograde, the internet has been shocking. Communication has been shocking. 
uh, weird and strange things have been going on in relationships, in anything to do with business. Mercury rules business. It rules health, mind you, because it is the ruling planet of Virgo. Therefore, where health is concerned, we're taking the microscope and going there, going in deep. Scorpio is death and transformation. It's shedding that those dead layers of skin, okay, slowly moving through transformation, but it's using that stethoscope and going in deep, looking for any health issues. Remember that we've got Hygieia here, Hygieia which means health, and it is connected in a square. Um, Mercury did... Uh, stop at the 11th degree and that's interesting that you know the asteroid of relationship is now at 11 degrees um, so it stopped and obviously it's left its mark at the 11th degree so something is going on in relationships commitments where they're going through transformation okay also remember that the eighth house is the natural house of it's the house of money money through other sources, your partner's money. Um, so therefore, as I was saying, Mercury stopped at the 11th degree and retro is retrograding backwards and it did connect in a perfect square to Hygieia. And Hygieia is also connected to Uranus. Uranus is the nervous system. Remember, it's radical, it's eccentric, it's scientific, it's um, social media. It's the ethers, it's heaven, okay? This is a square here. And remember that Uranus rules Aquarius. And Taurus is also the money house. So even, you know, we're connecting something that we've created, which is Leo. We're connecting something that we've created, our soul. Remember that Leo is ruled by the sun and the sun is the soul. It's also the house of children. There is a pressure. There is a pressure that was building. I do feel that it's starting to relieve. It's starting to decompress right now as the worst is over. Um, now the sun having entered Scorpio, again, the sun is the masculine energy. It rules Leo. It's the father. Um, and it's also going deep into Scorpio again trying to bring things to light okay um, Scorpio is fixed energy it's fixed energy so this is like a breakdown I would say that what we're being shown will be broken down and communicated and seen and communicated um, the information the hidden aspects will be shared as the sun and mercury. We've got the sun and the um, the sun and the sun, the sun and the child, the father and the child doing business together. Remember that Mercury is always traveling very close to the sun, as Mercury is the messenger of the gods. Now, in our solar system, obviously the sun is our god. Now, everyone believes in what they believe in, but we're talking about the energies now, right? And remember that the sun is also very healing. It's also very much about clarity. Now the full moon, which I will be doing a special video on, the full moon will be in the sign of Scorp uh, sorry, will be in the sign of Taurus, and it's going to be right on Uranus, where the sun will be right across, okay? The moon and Uranus will be connected and the sun will be right across on Halloween. Um, but I will be doing a video on that. So now what, what feels like a bit of relief here, and I feel that the relief came, uh, started off from yesterday roughly as the moon had passed over all these harsh energies. Now, Jupiter is not harsh, but he's not happy in Capricorn, and he expands on everything that is hard because he's connected to Pluto and Saturn. 
he is conjunct Pluto. He's coming closer and closer to Pluto. And in three weeks, this aspect will be precise, as Jupiter and Pluto will be exact. Remember, Pluto is the smallest planet, but it's the most one of the most powerful in our solar system. Jupiter is the largest, again, one of the most powerful. And it, this is like Clash of the Titans, I'm going to call it. And we've also got the general here, the Lord of Karma and of Timing. He's also conjunct Jupiter. Remember that Jupiter expands on all the malefic, transformational, karmic energies of these two. Now, the moon recently moved over, a few days ago, was moving over these energies. Even though these three musketeers are traveling direct. The moon is our emotions. The moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is heavy, remember. There's more of a heavy um, obligational having to stand strong, pull up those socks and become the emperor energies that we've gone through. And Remember also that Venus being here, she also trined over to the moon. So that was helpful energies. Now, the moon having moved into Aquarius, it's lighter energy. Now, what is Aquarius? It's the humanitarian. It's futuristic. It's the house of income after hard work. Remember that the moon in Capricorn, it's like um, emotionally, are you strong enough to work through? these energies, this transformation, um, this climbing of the ladder, are you emotionally strong enough to deal with what's going on in the world, to deal with the transformation in your own personal life? Where is Capricorn in your chart? That's where some form of a transformation is happening for you. Now I've got zero Aries so that it's easy for you to understand. But when we know our rising sign, we put our rising here and then we can count and see which house Capricorn is, is in our own birth chart. Anyway, so I was saying that Aquarius, again, is very futuristic. It's, it's the house of wishes and dreams. It's the house of groups. It's the internet, remember. It's also the ethers. It's very spiritual. So it's much lighter. So therefore, we've we've uh, breathed we've breathed a sigh of relief. I feel in the past day and a half, couple of days, not even a couple of days. I would say, I'd love to hear your comments on that. If that is the case for you, even though yes, the moon moves very quickly, and as you could see, um, it is showing up like there is a square here, um, as it's very close to connecting with, it's three degrees apart from Juno, but it moves very quickly. So this is getting a little bit more lighthearted. Remember Aquarius is, it's working together as a group, okay? It's being the individual, yes, doing things differently, doing things in an eccentric way. And that could be where relationships are concerned. Okay, so... What I can see here is that there, um, Mercury is in a bit of a, it's not, yeah, it's Mercury here, um, in a difficult connection to Neptune. Remember that ne Neptune is um, wearing those rose-colored glasses. It's very strong in its home sign of Pisces. It's also retrograde, which means it's working over time, right? And it's connecting, but something needs fixing here. It's not an easy aspect here, as you could see. Um, and Mercury is working very hard to bring up things that were confusing, uh, bring up information to clear the confusion. Also, I'm going to say that because Mercury is connected to health as well. And I feel like, I mean, this coronavirus began whilst, if I'm not mistaken, whilst Mercury was transiting, yes, it was very close to Neptune, if I remember rightly. Um, so it does signify 
work being done, I'm going to say behind the scenes, things that we don't know of are happening where health issues or this pandemic, this so-called pandemic is concerned. Okay, and things are going to be coming up to the surface to be shown to us as, remember, the messenger is close to the king. They're having a nice chat here about what's going on, what is real and what is not. Uh, remember that Scorpio is the serpent, it's the snake. So it can be animosity, but it can also mean wisdom and it can also mean healing. And the information that Mercury brings up, as Mercury is going to move back into Libra and then back again direct, will move direct on the 3rd of November, which is not long to go. Um, 3rd of November is not long to go. And therefore it will be traveling over the degrees again that it retrograded on. So that could be also be the time that we actually get to see the truths. And as soon as Mercury starts to oppose Uranus, so it's going to move back into Libra and then start. Let me just show you. Let me just show you a little bit, okay? So, okay, just follow the date. As you can see, Mercury is at zero Scorpio here on the 27th of October. Uh, Venus is at 29, almost in the sign of Libra. On the 28th, Venus is in its home sign of Libra. Beautiful. And it, it, it is in an opposition to Chiron. Chiron is that open wound, remember. It's, um, it's health, but it's also... It's psychological health, but also physical health. Um, Mercury is now in Libra. And let's go forward a little bit. As we've got Mercury still retrograde at 27, 26, 20, 25. So, well, depending on where you are in the, in the world, 4th of November it shows here when Mercury starts to move direct. Interesting that when Mercury moves direct, the sun will be at 11, 12 degrees, which is where, where Mercury um, stopped, stationed to turn retrograde. Okay, so let's go a little bit forward and let's just see. Okay, so right about around the 15th of November, I'm going to say, and look at this, I mean, just look at this. Look at this grand trine. Mars in Aries connected to Hygieia and the moon in Sagittarius. We know the moon is, I mean, Sagittarius is very jovial, very happy, very free, loving. It's all about truth as well. We could have important truths coming through, okay, at this time. So 15th, around the 15th, and look at this. Mars has now turned direct. Let's go back a little bit. As on the 13th of November, Mars turns direct, and it is trining over to Hygieia. Also, Neptune is trining over to Juno and the Sun conjunct. This is beautiful news absolutely beautiful news of rebirth, okay, rebirth through truth, where connections are concerned. Venus is now at 20 degrees of Libra, okay, and it is trining over to the North Node, sextiling the South Node. I mean, that's beautiful, absolutely beautiful energies. Anyway, everyone, Anyway, let's go back to the now. I think that that's what's uh, mostly important that I wanted to um, signify uh, to you, to point out to you. Okay, so as I said, in about three days we're going to have Mercury 
um, moving into Libra and Venus will be moving into Libra in about a day. So around the 25th, Mercury and the Sun will be conjunct. Also, what's very, very important in a week from now, as the Sun is going to come right across to Uranus. Okay, and that's an opposition, which an opposition is a tug of war. It's not easy. Okay, so this could be, again, shocking revelations. Okay, as the Sun brings up things, it brings clarity. Remember that the Sun is also generosity and um, generosity of spirit. Um, and the moon is right next to uh, Uranus here as well. So, you know, that could be a sudden revelations of sudden changes coming through. And remember that Uranus is in, in, in uh, this axis, Taurus, Scorpio is also money, anything to do with money. We're going to be seeing things clearly. What does the sun stand for in the tarot? Think of it. Okay. It's confidence. It's having the confidence to break free if you're in a difficult position, if you're not happy, if your future is telling you, I mean, your now is telling you that things are not working for you. This could be you or the other person, someone else in your life. Doing something radical. This could be on a collective energy as well, remember. So... That's a very big event as well, everyone. Okay, so, all right, let's go back to the now for a second as I wanted to mention that Mercury as Mercury, and those of you, of course, that are Gemini and Virgo, for, for those of you, it will be very important, but also for the mutable signs, as Mercury moves back into um, the area of Libra, it will be squaring over to these big players, okay? Um, so as it will be retrograding back, it will be squaring, but then again, it's going to square Saturn, obviously, because Saturn is at 25. That, that could be a difficult conversation with a government agency, a hierarchy, whoever that is. I mean, who is the Saturnian energy for you? Who, this is a boss, you know, this is someone who is in a powerful position. Okay, this will be, with Mercury retrograding and squaring, this will be getting to the details, working through the details. Anyway, I think I will leave it there as I could keep talking for a couple more hours with you, but um, they're the most important things that I need to mention. Uh, I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much and just hope that things are working out for you and don't give up on what your goals are, your aspirations. Um, always ask for, for help from spirit. If you feel as though there is no help around, as a lot of people are feeling very lonely at this time, there's that social distancing, there's that, you know, I cannot hug you, I cannot kiss you, I cannot give you a handshake. I can, hard, I can hardly communicate with you because I'm, if I'm wearing a mask, then my my words are blurred, so God help us, everyone. <laughs> That's all I can say, but anyway, we keep our heads held up high and know that all will be well, okay? There will be healing. Don't give up on whatever you are manifesting. As we've done most of the work, we're at the end of the road. We're at the end. We can see the finish line, everyone, okay? And I will leave you on that note. I want to thank you all so much for your patience. For those of you that are waiting on personal readings, um, please remember that I'm only human as well. I've got my ups and downs. I have my own personal issues as well. Um, and you all know that for those of you that have purchased personal readings, you, you know that I always uh, give more um, and extra when I can. Um, and that comes from the heart. So my heart goes out to all of you. And I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. I love reading your comments. I do read all of them, even though I have not been marking, noting that I've read your comment. I am reading all the comments. Um, it's just getting a little bit too hard to go through and um, 
write to all of you. If it's anything important, please email me. All the, the addresses are in the description box below. And I want to thank you all that are sending me emails, um, connecting with me. Love to talk to you. Thank you again so much. Love and light to all of you. Talk to you in the next couple of days. Ta-da.